Hello everyone, my name is Dean and welcome back to another Ruby on Rails tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the Ransack gem and we're going to be using this to create a search field as well as the ability to sort a couple different fields. Uh, so I'm going to be creating a very basic application that's going to have some articles. An article is going to have a title and it's going to have a body. Uh, and you're going to be able to search through both the title and the body as well as sort both of them in alphabetical or reverse alphabetical order. Uh, and then hopefully in part two, we'll cover, and that's my phone going off because I'm completely unprofessional, but in part two, hopefully we'll cover uh, searching and sorting through an article's comments. So it'll be through an association. Uh, and then in part three, hopefully we can cover some more advanced custom search queries. Like if you were to, you know, search through IP addresses that are stored as like an INET type in a Postgres database. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing so you get those videos. That's going to do it for me. Let's go ahead and let's jump into some code. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get started by adding the Ransack gem to our Rails application. And I'll have a link to the GitHub in the video description, or you can just search for the uh, Ransack gem on Google. And I'll just add this over here. So I'll say gem Ransack. And then I'm also going to be using the faker gem, and this is just for some test data. So I'll just say gem faker, and then I'll just run a bundle command over here to install both of these gems. Once that's done, what we can do is we can type, let me actually full screen this. We can say, let me zoom in, rails g scaffold, and we'll generate some articles. And this is just so we have some something to test with. We'll give each one a title uh, and we'll also give them a body of type text. And that's just so we have something to search through. We'll go ahead and we'll run this generator. And then once that's done, we can then run a rails db colon migrate command to create these tables. Now we can exit out of this, clear our terminal. Now that that's done, we can actually just go ahead and start up our rails server again zoom out a little bit and then let me come over to the uh, routes.rb file and what I'll do is I'll say root 2 2 uh, let me zoom in articles index and I'll save that and that should take us to the home page as soon as it finishes compiling so now we can create our articles so say this is a test article written by Dean. I'm just doing that so I have something unique there. And then we have that one. Now I'd like to have a larger test set to test our ransack gem with. And for that, we'll be using the faker gem. So for this, we can come over to DB seeds. And then what we can do is we can say articles.create and we'll give it a title. And we'll say this title is equal to faker lorem.sentences, we'll just pass it a number colon one. And then what we can do is we can put a comma after this and we'll give this a body of faker lorem.sentences. Uh, let's actually do lorem.paragraph with a sentence count of five something like that. And then up here, we'll just say 50 dot times do, I don't think we'll need X, but we'll just do it just in case. And then we can tab this all over and we can stop the server and we can run a rails, oops, a rails db colon seed command. Oh, and articles was uninitialized. I think it might just be article. Let me just check. It's been a minute since I've worked with Rails. Article.new, it is article, not articles. So we'll get rid of this S. And then we'll run our, oops, our Rails DB colon seed command again. And now the database should be seeded. So if I run Rails C, and I say article.all, Let's see, there should be a whole bunch here. So article.count returns 51. Cool. So that takes care of that. So now we'll start up our server. 
we can refresh the page and we should see a whole bunch of stuff here. So it looks like some of this is in quotes for the titles, but that's okay. That's just because the data was generated in a weird way, but that's fine. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to add in some of these ransacked fields and over on the repo for it, it shows you some examples. And the first thing it tells you to do is to go over to the controller. So we'll do that. We'll come up here. We'll come over to app controllers. There's my phone going off because I'm completely unprofessional. And then we'll say at Q for query is equal to article dot ransack. We'll pass it in the params of the query. And then instead of saying article dot all, we'll say at Q dot result. And we want it to be distinct. So say distinct true. And this just matters if you're searching by both the title and the body. And let's say you search for the word the, and they both have the in it, you might get multiple results. So this way it just only returns it once instead of returning it twice. So now that we have that out of the way, the next thing it'll tell us to do, uh, it does also cover pagination right here. If that's something you're into, we're not gonna cover pagination, but hopefully if I scroll down far enough, it should tell us what we need in our view. So in our view, it tells us to add the search form for. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into views, articles, index.html, and then right below this title, what I'll do is I'll just say uh, render, I don't know, we'll render a partial, we'll say render articles slash search form.html.erb, something like that. And then we can come over here, say new file, underscore search, underscore form.html.erb. And then we can copy this, or I guess we can just type it out. So we'll just say search form for at Q do F. I will say end, and then we need one for each field. So we have a title, so we'll say f.label for the title contains. Now there's a whole bunch of different options here. Uh, you can tell it if it contains the word, if it starts with the word, if it ends with the word. Uh, there's a whole table here, if I scroll down far enough, let me full screen this and try and find the list. Yeah, right here, so you have equals, uh, if it doesn't equal, if it matches with the like, similar to how you do your database queries, if it matches any, matches all, you know, less than, greater than, not null, not empty, is null, greater than any, starts with all of. So all of these things you can add to the end. And you would just say, instead of asterisk, you could say title and body. And then you would, you know, put this at the end and say underscore not, underscore end, underscore all. I'll show you how to do that in a minute here. Um, but basically what we do is we, uh, where did I leave the search form? We add in the label and we just say the labels for the title and whatever we're gonna, we're gonna do with it. And then we can say f dot uh, search field because we wanna be able to type in it. And we'll say title cont for contains. And then we can say f dot label for the body contains, and then f dot search field for the body contains. We'll save that, and we can come over here, refresh, and now we have two search forms. So what we can do is we can search for something, let's say test, uh, and we probably need a submit button too. F dot submit something like that. So you can hit search and you can see here it just returns test. Now I can also search for A and it'll return basically everything because a lot of things are gonna have an A in it. Uh, but let's search for, I don't know, whatever this word is because I can't imagine this is a very popular word. And yeah, you only get one result. And we can also search for this, rerum, rerum, and if I backspace that, it, I'm guessing there's an instance of this in each of the bodies, which it looks like there is. So that's sort of very quickly how you can do two different search forms. But of course, if you're in Google, it just has one that you search both of these with, right? I think the way you do that here is you do something like f.label, we'll say this is for title or 
body contains. I'll say f dot search field title or body contains. I don't know if this is the right syntax, but worst case scenario, it just errors out on us. So we can leave all of this blank and then let's find something that appears in both. Um, let's see, this will appear in both because there's an instance there and one there. So we'll say tempore. And now if I search, you can see it's either one of those. So what you could do is you could get rid of both of these and just leave your title or body contains. Now you just have one search field. And of course, instead of doing this, what you can just say is, you know, search articles, dot, dot, dot. And that'll give you your title. And then you might want to give this a placeholder. So you can say placeholder is just going to be search, something like that. You don't even need this label if you don't want it. And then you can say, I don't know, test which returns just the test article. And we can also just search for Dean, which will just return this one, because of course it's not seeded with my name. But you sort of get the idea how you can add these together uh, to create more complex query fields. Now, the other thing you can do is you can actually sort these uh, results as well. And if we come back over to our ransack gem here and we come down a little bit, I think it's going to be a sort link is what it's called. Yeah, something like this. So we'll just grab this, I think, and we'll put this on the index page. So instead of the title, what we'll say is we'll say a, oops, we will have a, some Ruby code and then we'll say sort link. We want to sort at Q. We want to sort by the title. We'll just say this is title. So this is the actual word. So right here we have body. So we'll be putting body in quote. Uh, and then we have the symbol, which is the, the title, or down here it'll be the body, uh, so that it knows what to pass back. And then we can also pass it a default order. So let's say we want to sort this alphabetically. So I'll just say default order is going to be, uh, I guess that would be ascending, right? And then let me close my parentheses, make sure all this is okay. That looks correct to me. So let's test this with just the title for now. Now you can see there's a little link here. And if I click this, it'll order these in alphabetical order. And I think the test article is up top because it's probably ordering these symbols after it. But you can see here, VOL, 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 VIT, I comes before O, so it's after it here uh, because we're sorting in descending order. And then if we scroll down, we'll slowly get towards the beginning of the alphabet. And we can do the same thing with the body. So if we come over to the body, we replace this title, the, the table heading. And it's important to note we're doing this on the headings. We're not doing it down here for each article uh, because this just works on the entire collection. And it just calls a article dot sort by whatever uh, call when you, when you click on it. So what we'll do is we'll say sort link. We'll sort by the query again. This time we'll pass in the body. Say this is, uh, and we can even change it. So we can say this is like article content, right? And then for this, we'll say default order is going to be in descending order. And of course, it can't sort both of these. So one of them is going to take precedence, right? So if we get rid of this default order and ref uh, refresh the page and make sure I only go to slash articles, or I can even just go to the, the root path, you can see here it's once again going to be sorting in a seemingly arbitrary way. So let's click this. W comes after V, and then there's AB. But I think on initial load, it's actually sorting. I don't even know if it is sorting. So I don't know if the default order is actually working here, unless it's the default order after I click it, which it could be. So if I save this, And then I click this. Yeah, so it's the default order after you click it. It's not initially sorted. Good to know. So we'll say default order for this is ASC. And then for this one, it'll be DESC. So we can search by this and then sort by this. And we can search for just articles written by me. And that's sort of the gist of how the ransack gem works. 
Now, of course, there's some extra functionality that you can get out of this by adding in custom queries uh, or custom sort logic. So one example I have of this, if I start up this other server that I have right here instead, so let me close the server I've been showing you. I'll start this one up and then I'll navigate to localhost port 3000. So you can see on this server, I have a name, which is just a URL because I was lazy. I seeded it in the same way I did the other one. And then I have an IP address. And these are actually notoriously difficult to sort just because if you cast this to an integer by getting rid of the dots, you might lose some information because there's zeros that are sort of implied here. And it can just be a pain. But this actually sorts just fine when I click on it. You can see it goes all the way through, and I think there's actually one here that is the same number twice. So 219, 219, and you can see that 128 comes before 142. And this is all being done with a specific type of data over in this PG admin table, uh, which you might be able to see. This IP is actually of type INET, and I'm sorting the INET data type uh, through one of the models through a more advanced query. And uh, the sort links for it are also a little bit customized, of course, because it's, it's sorting by the IP address. Um, and that's all stuff that we can cover in, I guess, probably part three of this video. Because I'd also like to cover how you would sort by, let's say, like the comments of an article. So through an association. And I think the associ association sort will probably be part two of this series. But that's going to do it for me. Uh, let's go ahead and let's cut to the outro video. Okay, so that's going to do it for part one in this small tutorial series. Hopefully this video helped. Hopefully you learned something and you can apply this to your own applications. Uh, in general, I think the Ransack gem is pretty helpful. It's very quick to set up something like this uh, and it does scale well. And once we cover some of the more advanced topics, you'll be able to use it just like you would any other search field. Uh, just with a little bit of help to get that boil boilerplate stuff, you know, out and, and up there very quickly for that rapid prototyping that Rails is known for. Uh, but that's going to do it for me. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.